so we have Sergio and Chris today. So, and Sergio, why don't why don't you just say hello and 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 maybe introduce yourself a little bit since we we didn't meet with you last week, and then we can start to talk a little bit about um, primary research. Maybe we can check in a little bit about secondary research too, like talking about what how that went for everybody and and some of the things that you discovered um, during that that time. And you know what? The other thing I really like about this about um, having your videos on. So many of you I. I've only met with your masks on. And so now it's a great opportunity for me to, to see your full faces, which makes me really, really, really happy. So it's nice to see those of you who have your videos on. Again, you'll get an extra credit point. All right, Sergio, I'll turn it over to you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sergio La Torre. And like uh, uh, Chris and Melanie, I'm also a professor. I teach at uh, University of San Francisco. And uh, with Chris, we run the uh, Sanctuary City Project. And right now, I'm in San Francisco, and it's very sunny and hot outside. Oh, excellent. Where do you live in San Francisco? In the Mission. Where in the Mission? Uh, 24th and Treat. I lived, I, I lived in San Francisco when I was very young, and I lived um, in Bernal Heights at the top of... Um, um, Whatever that hill, the I can't remember the name of that that street. The bus went up it. Anyways, I used Cold to Ridge, walk. maybe. Yeah, maybe I walked. I walk through the mission all the time. Me too. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So why don't we talk a little bit about how the secondary research went? And um, so, yeah, let's maybe start there. Thoughts. What 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 came up for for each of you? Maybe Chris and Sergio, you have some ideas of ways to, to start this conversation. Yeah, I mean, I you know take out a key point on what what somebody learned. What did somebody you know? It doesn't have to be all three articles we need to talk about, but maybe a point or two that you took up away from one of the articles that was meaningful for you. It can be it can be a question you know about about the article. It can be a comment or you know agree or disagree with the article. Just one phrase, one sentence, one word would help. I can say something. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, Paige, go. Yep, we can hear you. I couldn't tell if I could be heard. Um, so. The articles I found was, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find it. Uh, there were two talking about, um, one was talking about um, a person who knows themselves as being an immigrant and, but doesn't feel like they fit into that mold of what it is to be an immigrant. And then another um, article was discussing about um, the line between a foreigner and an immigrant. And personally, for me, as somebody who's in the process of becoming um, a permanent uh, a citizen of um, America, I feel that um, in many levels, because there is that line of what what does it mean to be an immigrant, and fitting that kind of like perspective mold of what people perceive immigrants to be. Currently, a lot of it is, you know, Latin Americans people from Mexico, all that stuff, and not much is heard about people from the Asian community or the European community. And people just don't really assume that um, a whole lot. So I could very much feel that relationship of like, you know, I'm, I always feel like a foreigner. Ever since I was young, I've lived outside of my own country. And from then on, I've always felt like a foreigner, even to this day, still moving in, and for many years being living in America, I still feel like a foreigner. That was, that was pretty good, Paige, thank you. So where, where is this mall coming from? Where is this idea of the immigrant, the, the, the non-American, Mexican? What do you think, where, where, where have you heard this before? I feel like it's a lot from media, um, you know, about, the rising issue of, uh, you know, border and immigrants, like what kind of stipulations are there, like refugees, all that stuff. And it's becoming more and more of an issue nowadays, uh, kind of once again, like it used to be like the whole like Chinese American um, crisis 
type of deal of immigration historically. And then now it's the push of um, Latin Americans coming in. And now it's like the concern of ICE and the border, all that stuff. And um, because of the media influence about, um, you know, lots of Latin Americans coming in, and now it's like, the, like kind of that image of like, these are like the immigrants that you'll see where a lot of the times there's still a lot more other people who still come here anyways. Uh, is, is, is the media ever told you why we come in here? Lots of reasons. Um, currently right now, what the media shows is that people are suffering from, you know, gang wars, poverty, people are coming in undocumented. And even in that case, there are also people who, there's also the untold story of that people also overstay here, which is the actual majority of undocumented people of overstaying, um, not the actual people jumping the border kind of style. Right, and, and do we know what causes this suffering, this poverty? Pardon? Do you know, do we know what causes uh, people's suffering, people's poverty in, uh, in Latin America, let's say? Do we know why? Do we know why? Um, a lot of it I hear are just like, uh, like, um, like the gang rivalry, like the violence that I hear. Um, uh, what is it? Governmental changes. So um, like Venezuela, how it's changed its um, governmental issue. And a lot of people are escaping that kind of thing. Um, yeah, but Venezuelans are not coming here. They're going to Spain or they're going to Colombia, to Brazil. They don't yeah. come to the States that, that, that often. It's mostly Central America. It's mostly Mexico that comes to the States and Latin America. You know, Brazilians, Argentinians, they have different, uh, different migration patterns. And, uh, you know, for us in our project, we, we looked at 1980s when the United States is waging a war in Central America. So United States foreign policy is affecting other countries. So people escaping war that this country is waging in their countries. And the United States have uh, international uh, contracts that they had to accept refugees. They, they signed in 1950s uh, contracts, international contracts saying that yes, we'll take people from war devastated countries. And those are some of the things that we don't hear in the media. They don't tell us those things. You know, one, one thing to think about is why are people leaving their homes, right? Are they leaving their home, their place where they grew up, their, their familiarity to go to another place? Why are they doing that? And, and you, you touched on a couple aspects of that, whether it's war, whether it's poverty. Um, ask yourself, why would people want to leave their home and come to another place and, and form a new identity in another place? That's, that's a hard thing to do. And I think you're talking about that a little bit, Paige. And, um, I think that's something that we should all think about when thinking about um, somebody undocumented or an immigrant come or a migrant coming over into a country or let's say going to Spain or Brazil or a place like that. Is there any other students that would like, oh, sorry, Sergio, go ahead, go ahead. No, that's okay, any, any other student, any other uh, comments or questions, whether to pages, uh, um, responses or your own? Sean, you talking or? Uh, no, I, I wasn't, sorry. Okay. And you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna go further, if you, don't, if you want to understand why the British came here in the 1500s, right? And then the Irish and then the Polish and then the Italians and then the Japanese, you know, there's this massive amount of migration happening in this country since the 1600s. And now the idea of the project is that if you're not a native of this country, your family has a history of migration. And we're interested in knowing, in knowing that, you know, where, where, is, uh, where is your last name from, Sean? Do you know? Or Jack, where's your last name from? Vazeris, Zuzi? Um, mine's from Greece. There you go. Uh, and, and your parents are from Greece or your grandparents? Uh, my great grandparents. And why did they come here? Uh, I don't really know. <laughs> ask your parents. <laughs> that's, that's the question you want to ask your parents. Why did my grandparents come here? Greece is beautiful. It's an amazing country. 
Have you been, Jack? No, I haven't traveled. Yeah, that's another theme page about immigrants, that you have two languages, you have two cultures, you have two countries, and you're constantly going back. When you stop going back, then you forget about your migration status. When you start speaking the language, you forgot about your you know, uh, country of birth. Uh, Sean, where is your last name from? Uh, as far as I know, it's French. Um, there you go. But there was an alteration of it, and the version that I have actually came from Norway and then changed its spelling when it got to France. Yep. And uh, who, who came from uh, France? Your parents? I don't know if I'm being honest. I don't know much about my uh, heritage in that sense. That's your homework. As your parents. There's the, uh, the Berkshire Immigrant Center, which is, which is over by you in the Berkshires. We've been talking with them as well. That's a nonprofit that we work with immigrants for community. And there's a, there's a fairly large French population, uh, immigrant population that they work with specifically uh, here as well. So that, that is here, Sean. You know, when the Greeks came, they, they, when the Greeks came, I'm sorry, they were also chastised. They were also looked bad at. You know, when the French came, the same thing. They had wars for them to come here. So what we're seeing right now is nothing new. We've seen this before, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 400, different actors. That's the only thing that we're seeing right now. And that directly uh, reflects, when did you forget you're an immigrant? That's the question we're asking. And um, for me, my last name's Trajari. That's Northern Italian. My grandparents came here. Um, and my, the Irish side is O'Donoghue um, and O'Hernan. And so they're from Eastern, uh, Eastern Ireland, little island off called the Aran Isles. And they came here when my, my grandparents came here in the 1940s. And so that's the story. And those are questions that I would ask them. And I would talk to them about it to find out their experience. And also my parents' experience living as first generation um, of immigrant parents. And so I've had multiple conversations about that with my mom, not so much my father, but more my mom and, and their experience growing up in Boston in the, uh, in the 60s. Does that make sense to everybody? He's double Catholic. <laughs> Anna, no, I, I, I'm Polish and Slovak and being Catholic, my, my family is very, very Catholic. And that was a huge part of, of growing up and what my, what my grandparents brought from um, Poland and Slovakia and having those conversations, like, you know, they're, they're conversations, right? They're learning about my history, but in many ways, this is, they are those kinds of interviews that we're looking for. These, this is primary research, having those conversations with our, with our families of, of trying to understand who we are through understanding where they came from. One of, one of the stories that my mom tells me about her mom, my grandma was, my grandma was actually born here and then she went back to, she lived here for like the first 10 years of her life. And then she went back to Slovakia and she hated it. And the number one thing she hated was that they didn't have running, they didn't have toilets in the house. And all she wanted to do was to come back to the United States so that she could have a toilet and running water in the house. She felt like it was just old. It, it was backwards in Slovakia that, that she, that there was more opportunity here and she didn't care what the opportunity was. And she ended up coming back and working as a, as a maid for a while before she met my grandfather. Um, but it, it, she would have done anything. She didn't want, she wanted to have that opportunity to have a toilet in her house, which is, which it seems crazy to us now, but, but, but I'll never forget my, my, my mom telling me that. That's a crazy story. Did anybody read any, um, any more in the articles about um, how immigration might be hard for people to come in these days? Maybe some policy or something that the government has done to um, stifle immigration or migrants? And are you talking? No? Oh, I, th I thought you were saying something. What's your last name? Uh, my last name is Sheehy. She's from where? Um, I am pretty sure it's Irish. Uh huh. But I'm not totally sure. And, and who came here? Your your parents or your grandparents? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> That's yeah. one of the things that I actually like did or like looked at. Sort of is that yeah. sort of like erasure of where you came from, really. Like I grew up not religious, not thinking about where like my heritage or anything. 
and I had to like try and figure that out later. And I always thought that, I thought that that was sort of interesting, that sort of like assimilation really of like trying to have this like one unified culture and like erasing of everything that like everywhere you came from really. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, assimilation. You know, the British never assimilated. They just came here and killed the natives, right? And they, they brought their own culture, their own language. Um, and now we come and we assimilate. So if you look at it, I think we, we are more flexible nowadays than they used to be in the past. Um, maybe, maybe that's the homework, you know, when, who came here when in your family and then go to that year and find out what was going on in Greece, in France, in Ireland, wherever you're coming from. And you'll see that there is a war at the time, famine, some sort of destruction that they're escaping. And that's no different than now. We're going through the same process right now. People are escaping, escaping climate change, war, violence, gender violence, domestic violence. So I would, I would suggest that. Maybe you want to go back and say, hey, who came here when? And then you do your own research looking at that time, that country, what was going on. Yeah, and just to follow up that, to, you know, to make it easier for everybody, instead of just doing cold interviews in the street, which can be kind of um, challenging, Sergio and I have been doing that for a long time, and so we have experience doing this, but um, it can be daunting. And so I really like the idea of talking to a parent, talking to a grandparent if you can, asking questions based on when did you come here? Why did you come here? What year did you come here? What did it look like in, the, in your country of origin when you came here? And what was your experience being in, a, uh, being in America when you came here, right? How did that affect your parents, right? I mean, there's, there's five or six questions that we can just come up with immediately to start thinking about how we can gain more information about, about your story and your parents' story and your grandparents' story. So I, I think that's a great way to, um, instead of doing these cold interviews in the streets, why don't we start, start there and start collecting our information and utilizing primary research, which as we talked about last week, our interview techniques, actually talking to somebody to gain more information, to gain more understanding. So wait, good question. Why do we do this? Sergio, why do we do this? Why do we talk to people and read and do research and, 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 and you know, interview people? And why, why, what's the process behind it? Uh, what's the process behind it? Uh, not the process, but, but why? Why do we do it? Why do we do it? Because, uh, we believe in dialogue, in conversation. We don't think we have the last word in this project. So we understand that this huge amount of responses that we would like to listen to and shape the project in that form. And I believe we're constantly learning too, are we not? We're learning from our participants and the people that give us, that give us these stories and give us these experiences. In that learning that we do, these stories that we collect and these responses that we collect turn into our artwork. They literally turn into these posters that we can then give out to people, share with the public, uh, put up in community and, and share these stories and experiences and hopefully start a larger dialogue of what's happening with immigration, not only now, but as we've been talking about since the beginning of the US, since, since when the British came here uh, uh, to the United States, right? To, to this country. So that's why we utilize primary and secondary research um, in, in our art practice. It, it literally feeds what we make as artists. And we're becoming very famous. So better do your homework right now. I'm not kidding. Chris, tell him how famous hey, we are. Hey, is there, okay, we are very famous. Is, is there someone who feels as though, I, I don't know if I could trace my, my, uh, my family back to another country? or they have a question about that or want to talk about that? Yes, Sean, go. So basically, like, to my understanding, uh, I have heritage from almost every European country, so I wouldn't even know where to start. And the weird part is I haven't, I don't have like a recent family member that uh, didn't live in, uh, the US. It was definitely a far back uh, transition, and I have no idea when it happened, so I wouldn't know how to track it down. Yeah, you know, that's a very good point. There's always, there's always one uncle in your family that knows. 
that uncle that was always taking photos in the in parties and whatnot, he knows. Or that aunt that was archiving photographs, you know, she knows. There's somebody in family that knows exactly when you came here. Or not you, but your ancestors. And uh, that last European country, if it was France, you know, they know exactly who came here. So I would ask your parents, you know, who do you think knows our history? And uh, this idea that you are from all over Europe, yeah, right, but there's one country that, that, that your ancestors came from to America, all right? Not in Europe. Once they were in Europe, the last country before they came to America, what country was that? Start with your you parents, Sean. Yeah, as, as your parents. And honestly, one aunt, one uncle, you know, they were doing something, archiving information, because we all have that uncle. We all have that aunt, you know, that are archiving photographs and letters and, you know, tracing uh, family tree and stuff like that. You'll find them. Alexis, did you talk? Do you have any questions? Um, I don't think so. I, I feel kind of similarly to Sean, like a lot of my family, uh, we're all, I don't really know about where we came from. Like, I think I'm French and Irish, but I don't really know what family members came from there. So. And would you like to know? Yeah. I mean, I'm curious. I've, I've kind of asked my parents, but they don't really know either. So. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, what you could do is, um, I, I would suggest talking to your parents again, and then maybe, as Sergio was saying, maybe there's somebody that your parents could, um, you know, uh, connect you with, maybe give you a phone number too, who might have some of that information, because, you know, I, I really think it's there. I mean, I, I, I think you'll be able to dig and find it a bit. It just might take a little wor uh, work beyond your parents to find it, but ask them. Maybe it's one of their... Uh, Maybe, maybe even a grandparent, right? You could talk to your grandparents that if they're, if they're still alive, um, that, that, which is fine. So maybe it's an aunt or an uncle or somebody. So see, see dig a little deeper with the parents, okay? And just yeah. start there and, and see what they say. Okay. I know for me, well, it was one of my aunts who, my, my mother's eldest sister was the one who knew a lot of the stories and she was the one that was writing things down. And so I had to, I had to ask her. And even, even if there's not a lot of stories being shared with, with you necessarily about the experience, I mean, even if you can just find out where that, where that came from, where that migration came from, then you can start looking into, well, why did somebody leave, um, let's say France, for example, or why did somebody else leave Ireland, right? Uh, in, I in Ireland, there was a huge potato famine, there was starvation happening, and that's why my grandparents left. And so start to, you can just at least get my, parent, my grandparents or my, my great grandparents came from here, and then you can start thinking about, well, why did, they, why did they leave to come here? And what was their experience like there? You can do research, on, like you can do secondary research on that completely, so. So, so Chris and Sergio, I'm wondering if you could do a little role play, like maybe one of you pretend that you're a parent or a grandparent and the other one of you pretend that you're you're this person trying to find some something about yourself maybe do a, like what would be some of the questions you would start with how would you maybe do a little role play about how you would do that okay so you can say uh this is my grandmother right yeah hi grandma hello hey, how are you there are these two guys from california that are so, you know talking to my class right now and they want us to work on this project about immigration and I don't really care about immigration because, you know, I'm here. I was born here, I speak English, and, you know, I look like uh, in America. So, uh, what, who, who, uh, who, wh where are we from, Grandma? Yeah, so I know you grew up in Tijuana, and you have family here. And, uh, you know, we, we were came here, but we also came from other places in Mexico before that. So we traveled to Tijuana from point A and point B. And um, we have families spread out all across Mexico, yeah. not just Tijuana. So we are from Mexico then. You're from Mexico? Yeah, are we from Mexico, Grandma? That's a good question. What do you think? Are you, are you from Mexico or no? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I feel like I, I, like I look like an American and I'm rather yeah. white. So, I'm, I, you know, I, and I speak the language very well. Mm -hmm. So, well, no, but you can't. Yeah, go ahead. Can, 
wh why did we come here? Well, I'm still here, but why did you come here? Why you're did you go to the you're, U.S.? You're my grandma. Jeez, we God. worked, we came from Tijuana for, for a better place, right? So we needed to move. We came back from a location that we did not feel safe in and we went to Tijuana. We went to the border, A, so we could also have opportunity in the U.S. to work in the U.S. and then to come back home to Tijuana. So we were crossing the border, going back for work. And uh, that was one of the reasons why. There you go. That's an example. Yeah. What other questions would you ask? You, then you could start to dig into, well, what other, what other regions in Mexico were my, were my family from, right? Why did, they, why did some of the family decide to move from there to go over to Tijuana, right? Um, what other questions? And if you look at Mexico, Mexico has a very similar migration patterns like the United States, right? Europeans came over, killed the natives, you know, brought a new language, a new culture, and the migration kept happening from Europe. So Germans in Mexico, Irish in Mexico, not so many British because they, they were in the States, but Spanish for sure, Italians, a lot of them, you know, so it's kind of like very similar. A lot of uh, Middle Eastern migration as well. So you can say like, Sean, I'm from all over the place, you know, I'm not just Mexican because my grandparents and my great grandparents came from, you know, uh, maybe maybe uh, 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 Lebanon, maybe Spain, maybe France. So there's all this confusion, right? But I know that I came from one particular place, which is Mexico. And I came looking for a better opportunity. I'm the first one that left my, my, my family. Now, if I were talking to my grandparents, which I did before they passed, they've, they both passed away. So I, I get a lot of my information through my mom and through my, uh, as Sergio mentioned, through my uncle, who who um, really studied this, actually. My uncle took great interest in our family history. Uh, we're, we're off a little island called the Aran Isles. It's off the east coast of Galway. And um, my family came uh, because of the potato famine, but they didn't come all together. My grandmother came first. She came by herself when she, I wanna say she was about 16 years old and came over to the Boston area. She came through New York and moved to Boston. Um, and then family members from there started coming after she successfully uh, migrated over to the U.S. We're talking the 40s. Uh, my grandfather came over a little after they met and then had a family producing my mom. Um, but the family left because of famine and they kind of scattered. You know, they, some were in Boston. I had a couple of relatives in New York. Uh, for different reasons, they did this. But my uncle charted that family tree for us and charted the migration path and charted the reasons why. And he, he would be a great, uh, a great resource on who I would want to talk to, to learn something about. My mom could tell me the stories, but she would refer me to him. And so that's what I would do if I were doing this project. You know, a question I, I wonder about, and this came up when I was doing a little bit of my own research, is the, the things that people bring with them. What is important enough to, 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 to come with someone? And, um, and what mementos, do you search out once you're here to to kind of keep you linked to where your your country of origin and for you know for my family a lot of it was religious items and uh, rosaries and crosses but also watches watches were something that you can easily put onto your person and carry with you and and that became that that's something I'm really interested in is is how do we keep our heritage or how did our grandparents, how did our great grandparents kind of keep that connection? Was it important to them? Or, you know, like, like Anna was talking about, was it important to not remember anything? Was it important to try to erase that? And I think that's an important part of the, the, what you discover as well is, is, is what, where you're from and why you remember it and where you're from and why you try to forget it. It's, I think both of those things are, are important to find out in this process. Yeah, that, that's a good point, Melanie. Also, also, sometimes when you leave a place, you cannot go back, right? Because you, you are seen as a, as a traitor. You, you left that country, you migrated, so you no longer belong here. And some people, yeah, try to forget that, of course. And then if you left because of war or violence, then you don't wanna go back at all or remember yourself. So yeah, there's not one migrant experience, right? There's, there's many experiences. And that's why we're doing this project to, uh, to, to like, you know, uh, archive many experiences. Yeah, I, you know, just to bring it back to another example, my, my grandmother, she came here and she wanted to assimilate. And so both my grandmother and grandfather, they both spoke Gaelic, but we never heard them speaking Gaelic once. 
my parents, my mom does not speak Gaelic. Uh, her sisters and brothers do not speak Gaelic. They didn't trans, they didn't pass down the language. And, um, you know, there, there were artifacts that, that my grandmother collected that we got to see that, that were, I, you know, Irish in nature or Irish collectibles for her. But I think assimilation were, was very big for my, for my grandmother and my grandfather trying to make it in the U.S. and trying to, in their eyes, have a better life. My grandmother didn't go back to Ireland until right before she died. She died in her 60s. She died when she was young. Um, but she, she went back right before. And then, um, you know, my, from my mom's experience, it, it was just a different world for her. She felt lost. She came back. And then, unfortunately, right after, she ended up dying of breast cancer. But um, my mom shared experiences with me about that, going back and feeling like an outsider and feeling as though I, I, I'm, I don't know where my home is anymore, you know? Why do you think it's important for for us now, you know, for for all of all of us in this room together, to understand where we came from? Why is it important, or to understand how we are a legacy of immigration? Why is it important? I think it is important because there is this uh, rather crazy time we live in right now that uh, that is, is, is increasingly violent against difference. And if we understand that we are part of that difference, then maybe that violence will be eliminated. You know, just sort of understanding others. So first understand yourself, right? And as, as Paige brought up right away, this, this violence takes many forms. It's taking forms right now in the media, it's taking forms in politics, it's taking form in, in forms with, with our language that we're using. And so understanding who we are and where we come from hopefully can possibly bring some empathy to a very, uh, very divisive, divisive place that we're living in right now in the United States. So I think that's a really good point. I'd love to open up to the class. I know we're kind of running low on time, but what do people think about that? Why, why do you think it's important to understand where we come from and acknowledge that and, and uh, talk about that? Or is Jack. it not important to you? Jack, yes. I feel like it's kind of important because of kind of what you were saying, Sergio, is like, it's like passing judgment because we're kind of like a lot of people tend to judge immigrants coming into the country now, but don't kind of acknowledge that their family was in similar situations and don't acknowledge that that's where they came from as well when they pass that judgment. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jack. Anybody? Ian, what are you doing there? Ian, how are you? What do you think? Um, I personally think that it's really important. Um, it was important, especially like in my case, because my um, I didn't know a lot about my family. And then my grandfather, who um, took up genealogy um, uh, when I was an infant, he um, gave me an entire file book on my family history back until the 1600s. And I thought it was just amazing to see where I come from and my family, where we come from, because um, it, it, was, it was really interesting, especially for me, to see how my family in Germany, we had like a, a whole family crest and we had um, all of these, all of this history, these stories that I was never told. And um, he found that and that was, it made, it made me feel more whole, I guess, to know where I come from. And, where, where did your family move to when they came from? Uh, did they come from Germany to the U.S.? Yeah, they came from Germany. Um, and did they come to Massachusetts? Or um, my, uh, I, th I think they moved to New York. I think it was New York. That would be a good starting place for you to think about what you know what the German population was like in New York at the time when they came. Um, what the German, what was going on in Germany when you're, when you're, either your grandparents or your great grandparents left. So you have two good locations that you can start to do some more research on this week. Um, and again, talk to, uh, you know, who was it again? Your grandfather, right? Yeah, my grandfather's genealogist. Yeah. Is he is he still around or is he is he yeah. alive? Mm -hmm. So maybe it'd be great just to give him a call and check in with him and just ask a couple of specific questions that you have um, based off what you've learned through the through the scrapbook that he gave you. I think that'd be great. Thank you, Ian. Anybody else? Ryan, are you there? Ryan Powers, are you there? I am here. Could you uh, repeat what you asked? I kind of forgot it. What? <laughs> <laughs>
Why do you think it's important or not to understand where you come from? Um, I think it's super important to know where you come from because I, I couldn't help feeling the last time I, or when I visited Ireland that like when I came back that I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not American. Like we're, we're all kind of just transplanted here. So I feel like getting to know our own, uh, our own history will help not only like, um, you know, us in the future, like becoming uh, people, but you know, like also talking to other people, figuring out where they're from and trying to make connections, like making similarities between each other when, you know, everybody in this world right now is quote unquote so different, you know, we need to find similarities with each other to. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Anybody else? You know, I know we had talked about doing these breakout rooms, but I think a better thing at this point, maybe it's talking about how does this relate to art? Yeah. Good question. How does it relate to art? So what we're doing right now is exactly what Sergio and I do when we try to try to put when we, we've been putting together Sanctuary City projects. So as, as I told you about last week, it started off with a lot of secondary research. We, we, we spent a year doing secondary research with a team of artists, um, just like yourselves, um, reading, uh, you know, periodicals, magazines, talking with think tanks, looking at think tank websites, Pew Research Center, things like that. And from there, we started doing primary research, which what you're doing now, we started asking for people for their stories. We, um, remember those sheets I showed you last week? Last week they had um, questions on them. Uh, you know, what would you tell an immigrant? Do you know anybody been deported? Uh, have you seen an ICE raid? We took the answers that people gave us, right? Which is primary research. People gave us over a thousand answers by this point. And we've turned those into posters. So we've taken what people have told us. We've taken the research that we've done and started to turn those into actual posters, actual silkscreen posters that I showed you last week that we can then print with people give out to people, put up in the public, um, you know, start further conversation surrounding our own stories, our own histories of where we come from, surrounding immigration policy right now happening in the U.S., surrounding policy that started back in 1989 when San Francisco and 13 cities became sanctuary cities. So we use this information that we've collected to make art with. But it, at the same time, is to understand what we're trying, what what it is about sanctuary cities and immigration we're interested in, to understand that topic, to understand that theme, right? Going in, we had a certain understanding of immigration policy, but through the research and through talking with people and talking with nonprofits, we're not experts, but we've learned quite a bit. We 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 are pretty knowledgeable regarding immigration policy and sanctuary city policy and people's experiences of that in, in not only in the U.S. but in other countries as well. So utilizing primary and secondary research allows you to have a better understanding of information and, 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 and subject matter that you want to talk about in your art projects, right? Does that make sense? It allows us to have it. Yeah, go ahead, Sergio. Go ahead. Melanie, so what, what, what are you asking? Whether, whether I mean, why, why make art out of this information? Or, or what is the question that you're asking about art? I think I think that's another good question is is why the the why like why do this why even make art out of this like what what is the the end the end goal but even like 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 I think so when you're when you're starting to I think as a student of art you're so used to kind of like art is is is, is self expression it's this thing of of getting my feelings down on, on paper or it might be drawing something from observation this role of like really diving into these, these, these articles and doing very formal research and talking to people, taking that and making that into something, I think is really a new thing for, for a lot yeah. of people. Like it's, I don't, you don't see art being made that way very often. It is, or, or you do if you know where to look for it, but it's not something that is, is what you see in your art history, your intro to art history or your contemporary, and maybe some contemporary art classes, but definitely not, you know, the Mona Lisa wasn't about uh, any kind of particular research, in, you know, you know what I mean? So I guess, I guess that's what I mean is, is what, does that, uh, that's a very long-winded question. No, no, that, that, that's good. So, so what is the Mona Lisa about? 
Not you, Any, anybody else. What is the Mona Lisa about? Alana, what is the Mona Lisa about? Have you seen the Mona Lisa? Have you seen the uh, Mona Lisa? Yeah, I actually have. <laughs> Where? What did you see her? In France. And, and before that, did you see her before that? You know, somewhere else? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Where? Like in the Cracker Jacks bags or your cereal bags or your meal carton? Um, like online or like in school. And when you see her in, in, at the Louvre, what, what did you think? Um, at the actual Louvre, it was... Mm, it was actually small. I, I actually don't know how to describe it. Yeah. I, <laughs> it was like you're expecting something really grand and you just see just this little painting. And a lot of people, right? Yeah. Behind glass. What a deception. Um, anyhow, I, I think that, you know, um, art and migration has been happening probably late 1800s, right? When, when artists started traveling uh, the world. So, you know, all the, all the modernists traveled the world. And, uh, you know, when Trump was elected, the MoMA or the Met, I forgot, they removed works of art done by immigrants. So Chagall, Picasso, Matisse, Miro, all the modernists were removed from the galleries. So you go to the museum and you wouldn't see art because it was done by immigrants. And yes, they didn't have the same kind of like research behind the projects, but they were talking about their own experiences as, as you know, in this case, exiles, you know, because they were intellectuals, they were not escaping war, they were just pretty much like trying new trends and new histories in different countries. And uh, if you study our history, the 1960s, a lot happened, not only in, in art, but in culture, civil rights movement, you know, LGBTQI, all these movements are happening. So people of color, you know, women, LGBTQI. So there's new forms of, of, of expression. So what we did during that time is kind of like revive our history done by Europeans, mostly white male Europeans. So that's why we do research because we have to deconstruct all the lies they told us. As art is language. Mona Lisa is language. Mona Lisa went to your house before you went to see her at the Louvre, and she told you something. I have no idea what she told you, but what she told me, I cannot tell you. It's a secret between Mona Lisa and I. But you know, art is language. So we have to, right now, understand that language and use it to express you know, our times, ourselves. That's what, that, that's why I see this form of art being important, Melanie. Research is important. And not, not everyone works like, like, like we do. But uh, for us, it's important to understand what has happened, you know, to understand what is happening right now. Anybody else? Any more Mona Lisa's? Melanie, was there anything else we wanted to cover? I think, I think we got from your email the questions. Yeah, I, w I would open it up to, to students. Do you, ha do you have a sense of what primary research is at this point? Yes. I, and do you have a sense of what secondary research is? I'm sure you have no idea what you're supposed to do for homework because I have not created that assignment. I wanted to wait to see what happened today, but essentially what you are going to be doing is, is interviewing someone in your family. It, two, I'm going to say two people in your family. And it can be an, a parent, a grandparent, aunt, uncle, cousin, whatever. And you want to find out and understand when your family came here, why they came here, what was happening in their country of origin, where they came to here and sort of what was happening here and what kind of community they came into. And then I think each of you may have other, other questions you wanna supplement based on some of the research you've done already or that might come up. For example, like for me, I'm very interested in artifacts. What were 
the imp- what were the things that people my family brought with them and why um there might be other things that that come up for you but that's going to be roughly what your next step is so i guess my questions are do you have questions about primary research do you have questions about secondary research i'm going to see you all in a few minutes so we can ask those more if more come up but right now while we have chris and sergio what questions if any do you have or concerns or things you want to add. Are we all artists here? Are we, are we also, uh, um, majoring in art in this class? No? Yes? 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 Alana, why, why are you uh, studying? What's, what's your major? My major is art management. Ah, there you go. Still in the art industry. Okay. And do we study our history or no? Are, are you taking our history classes? Yeah. Yeah. What about the rest? Yes? No? Yes. Okay. Right. Some may have not taken their art history classes yet. So art majors need to take four, four art history classes. Arts management needs to take one or two. Right. I think we have, a, we have a couple of other majors. The music major. Um, some, I can't remember. Okay. A couple of other arts management majors. Um, one, one thing I did want to add, Melanie and Sergio, to um, doing some primary research is how you document this and how you record this, okay? So when we're having a conversation, it can be really hard to remember all of the details or all the important details that you might miss when you're just talking to somebody in a natural conversation. Um, so I always encourage my students to um, either take notes while they're, while they're um, doing the interview. Uh, best case scenario is recording the interview. Uh, Zoom's really nice right now because you can do a Zoom call and you can record that Zoom call and then go, go back at it and, and you know, take notes and pick out what's important, right? So try your hardest to record these interviews, whether it's with your phone, with Zoom, or just taking notes at the time. It will help you immensely when you're thinking about what the conversation you just had, you know, a day later you're thinking about it, and then all of a sudden you forgot all this important information. So please try to record that. And you may be wondering, what are we gonna do with all of this? And for now, I think you're just doing this research and, and the research is gonna lead you to where it's gonna go. And so just keep that in the back of your mind that, that this is actually a lot of what artists do where they do this research, they have no clue as to where it's gonna take them, but they're doing it and, and gathering that. And then the information will kind of lead you to the final place. What would you, what would you two add to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're exactly right. Whenever I teach this to my students, and it's the students that are your all age, I mean, it's, it's um, you know, college students. I always tell you, just trust me, we're going on a journey here. The information is going to lead the project. Yeah. And that completely happened for Sanctuary City Project. I mean, Sergio, I want to tell them about, you know, we did this research and then all of a sudden the information led the project. Yeah, uh, work makes work in the arts. With Sanctuary City Project, we did this research and from there became an installation or a, a show, a show at a gallery in San Francisco that had the research displayed on the walls. It had a room with, with voices uh, from, from um, city hall meetings. It had video projections. It had information on uh, census information for the city of San Francisco. So the research led what the project looked like for our first gallery installation. From there, the research has led us to do posters. We're now making posters and putting those out in the public and making billboards and making banners. But the research, both primary and secondary, the books and the magazines and talking to people have led the physical form of, of what you see, the actual fine arts project. I got a question. Yep. Um, so, um, my in-laws, um, my in-laws' grandparents, um, they're both Polish, um, but they have very similar stories. Um, I asked them pretty much right when I got married, like, oh, like, where's your, the family from? Like, you know, do you know? Um, and I also met 
their great grandmother who's actually the second generation or first generation i guess of the immigrant family just being like the full american so um does it matter if it's kind of like the same story should i change it like find somebody else kind of thing i don't know um yeah i mean i i i I, I would encourage us to try to learn something new, uh, you know, maybe talk, to, maybe if there's another lineage you could look at to do that. But if you have, you know, the Polish stories already, then yeah, I mean, I think you could go with that. Maybe just try to dig a little deeper and, and have another conversation, see what other types of information you could gather from that, possibly. Um, but it's, it sounds like you're already onto a good start, which is great, right? You, they're, they're still around and you can contact them and, and have a conversation. Yeah. I mean, I would encourage that, knowing what you know now, maybe come up with, an, you know, a couple more questions or, or interests that you're interested in and, and lead with that and see how they respond to that. Um, you know, I, it, it's always good to lead when we're doing these conversations with just a couple questions you have in mind. And, um, you know, from there, just kind of riff off them and see, you know, see what comes to mind, just in a normal course of a conversation. But you have the luxury of already knowing a little. So think about some other questions to ask them and see how you can challenge, challenge them a little more on some of that history. All right. You know, another thing I would say, Paige, based on the research you've done already, is look at look at those articles you've read already and see if if there's a question from there that you can then ask them to, that could expand on what you that secondary research you did for today. Yeah, absolutely. And that may not work for all of you, but that might work for some of you to use what you've done what that that initial secondary research that might be helpful in forming some other questions. And for some of you, it might not, but, um, and it might take some of you to some, some interesting places. I know that just based on the reading I did that there, you, some of you uncovered a couple of uncomfortable things maybe in that you're not sure you want to go into, maybe take some of the, take a, a, a risk and, and follow some of that. And it also works too with like, you know, the primary research, sometimes that happens first. You talk to a family member, get a story, and then that uncovers that they came to the U.S. in, in so-and-so date. And then from there, you start doing secondary research on what was happening at that time in that location to, a, you know, with the family member living in Boston in the, in the 60s, right? Or the family, lever, family member living in Boston in the 40s. Like, what was happening in Boston at that time? based off a wave of Irish immigrants coming into this country. You can start doing the secondary research after you have that story. So we can go vice versa in a lot of ways. So I, th I think we have to wrap up, unless there's any last questions or last comments. Um, and Chris, Sergio, any, any last, last things, students? Next week, we'll start to take this information and turn it into a visual. So just to let you know how the process goes, we're going to be visualizing this information next week. And so we'll start, we'll start being creative. We'll start doing formatting and putting it into a poster form. So that's where it's going. Uh, yeah, and, and thank you for the conversation. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. And so students, I will see um, some of you at 4 and the rest of you at 445 to do some, some um, pressure printing. And so until then, thank you, everyone. And those of you who have your videos on, you'll get some extra credit. And I'll see Sergio and Chris, see you next week. Thank you, everybody. Thank Bye. you.